Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup 29 July 2017. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how it can help you in your own trading, you may visit our website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, let us go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. In today's topic, we will look at oil, gold, India's nifty future, and few forex pairs through Q technical charts. We will also do the same for USA market ETFs, SPY, QQQ, DIA, and IWM. After that, we will look at broad market internal analysis and sector and industry analysis using key graphs and ranking table. Along the way, we may review some of the community posts since our last class and look for potential trade for the coming week. Q&A is throughout the session. You may ask questions using the Q&A panel and I will try to answer them as we go along. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let us move to live system. We are looking at US oil using backdrop template on the left hand side using weekly interval and hop on template on the right hand side using daily interval. In earlier sessions, we had discussed the possibility of taking a go with flow trend following long trade on this cyan candle. Since then, price went up. This week, it displayed another cyan candle, a possible go with flow long trade signal. And from there, for three days, price went up. As it has hit the upper boundary now, if somebody entered long trade on this cyan candle, they might book partial profit. US oil is overbought now as shown by the dot on the candle. So it is a bit late to enter long position right now. If somebody didn't take a position in US oil yet, one may wait for price to come down and then tilt up, thereby giving another go with flow long trade opportunity. Let us look at gold. For gold, when price came below this watermark level and went back up, we discussed in earlier sessions that there was a possibility of box long trade setup. Since then, gold strongly went up. At the right edge of the chart, gold is overbought as shown by the stretch dot on top of the candle. So if somebody didn't catch the bottom using the box long trade setup, it may be too late to enter a trade right now. Those who entered the long position in gold at the bottom could book some profit now as it has hit the upper boundary. And partial position may be held. The next target would be the memory line that is around 122 and 123. Let's look at India's Nifty Futures. India's Nifty Futures continues to go up strongly. On Thursday, it displayed a bearish headwind symbol. However, the weekly was not bearish enough and therefore there was no headwind short trade setup. After that, on Friday, price had a narrow range day and on Monday, price went up again. If somebody didn't enter a long position in Nifty earlier, 
it is a bit late to enter a long position now because price is already above upper boundary and it is also overbought. At the right edge, there is no low risk trade signal in Nifty right now. Let's look at Sing Dollar. In Sing Dollar, we had a go with flow short trade opportunity using this magenta flow color candle. After that, price hit the watermark low level, lower boundary, and it continued to go down further. Few days ago, price came very close to the support memory level and displayed a bullish headwind signal. So if somebody was still holding partial position on sing dollar that was initiated based on this bearish flow color candle then some more profit could be booked when the bullish headwind signal appeared at the right edge of the chart price is already oversold as seen by the stretch dots below the candle so it is late to enter any short position right now there is no trade signal in sing dollar at the right edge of the chart let's look at australian dollar in australian dollar we had the last long trade using the go with flow trend following setup on this cyan candle since then price went up hit the upper boundary where at least partial position was to be closed with profit and since then price continued to go up if somebody didn't catch this cyan candle then there was no other low risk entry opportunity in australian dollar at the right edge of the chart we see that on monday australian dollar is displaying a bear release signal bear release signal had come last week on thursday as well for several days now we see that australian dollar is moving sideways it is overbought as australian dollar is moving sideways and it is already close to the upper boundary it may be safer to wait for a low risk opportunity before taking the next trade let's now look at the usa market etfs the standard and poor's 500 etf spy moved largely sideways this way we are looking at spy using weekly backdrop template on the left hand side and daily hop on template on the right hand side this week spy tried to go above the watermark level but came down on thursday it had a candle with very large lower tail and friday had a narrow range day there is no clear direction on the right hand side to allow us to take any trade we may wait for further confirmation before taking the next trade let's look at qqq qqq also tried to go above the watermark level on thursday it had a bear release signal the candle had indecisive shape it had a hollow body but a long lower tail just like in case of spy qqq also had a narrow range day on friday there is no clear signal in qqq right now we may wait for the next low risk opportunity to come following one of the q trade setups before taking the next trade let's look at dia dia is clearly the strongest among spy qqq and dia it could break above the watermark resistance level on thursday it went up and on friday also it went up again thursday had very high activity friday had high activity in the weekly chart also we can see that it has broken above the watermark resistance level with a very bullish shape candle dia is already overbought on the right side of the chart so we may wait for a low risk opportunity before taking the next trade let's look at the last of the usa broad market etfs that is iwm we had discussed earlier that iwm was largely moving sideways as we can see from the weekly chart 
and we had also discussed that there was possibility of taking box short trade setups using the bear release signal. On Wednesday, IWM displayed a bear release signal. However, there was not heavy activity, so all the requirements of a box short trade setup were not met. It could probably be used to take a profitable day trade or two days trade as IWM fell from Wednesday. At the right edge of the chart, price is very close to the support memory line. Friday's candle was narrow range candle and Thursday's candle was also indecisive. So it may be safer to stand aside and wait for the next low risk entry opportunity. Now we move to broad market analysis and sector and industry analysis. For broad market analysis, every week we look at NASDAQ composite index on the left hand side, NYSE composite index on the right hand side, both using weekly charts and three pairs of internal studies that is new high low, advanced decline and up down volume. As this analysis is using broad market composite indices and also using weekly charts, the outcome is to be used only for long term investing decisions and not for swing trading or day trading. This week we can see that NASDAQ closed with an indecisive candle both with upper tail and lower tail. There is a bear release signal in the weekly chart of NASDAQ. This week NYSE ended stronger than NASDAQ it doesn't have any indecisive candle on the right hand side. Instead, it has a bullish candle. NYSE is overbought as seen by the stretch dots appearing on top of the candle. Over longer period in the weekly charts, NASDAQ and NYSE continues to be in strong uptrend. In terms of the internals, we see that there is a mixed picture the new high lows for both NASDAQ and NYSE declined as did the up down volume in NASDAQ. Whereas the advanced decline for both NASDAQ and NYSE went up and up down volume of NYSE also went up. So in summary, we can say that the indices continue to be in uptrend, the internals continue to be weak because they couldn't surpass previous highs and for this particular week the internals are neutral. Let's now move to sector analysis. For sector analysis every week we look at 10 sectors however from this week we are starting to look at 11 sectors. The sector that we have added this way is real estate sector. Earlier, it used to be grouped inside the financial sector. Now we have made a separate bar for the real estate. We look at these 11 sectors across three review periods, the blue bar, represents performance of this week, green bar, performance of one week prior to blue bar, and the red bar, performance of two weeks prior to the green bar. Together, the three bars represent performance over four weeks or about one month period. This week, we see that six sectors are up and five sectors are down. So at a sector level, the picture is mixed. Telecom is the biggest gainer of this week. Through QH analysis, you could catch the precise turning point in telecom sector. The idea was actually shared in our traders community on 20th July and that day could capture the precise turning point. Those using QEdge 
desktop version, that is the real time version, was able to enter long trades in telecom sector on that day. And those trades could catch the almost very bottom of stocks like Verizon, CTL, etc. This was discussed in more detail in earlier weekly market roundups and those trades ended up being extremely profitable as of end of this Friday. Among all the 11 sectors, only consumer discretionary is up over all the three review periods. So there were probably several long opportunities in consumer discretionary sectors starting from about one month ago. Let's now move to industry analysis. If we look at the five days best performing industries, then we see that four of the 10 best performers are related to telecom sector. As we discussed just now in our sector analysis, that we could catch the very bottom of several telecom companies using QH. And last week's market roundup, we had discussed that telecom industries were among top ranked improvers. We keep on discussing that the industries that are top ranked improver in a particular week often end up being top performers in subsequent weeks. That happened in telecom again as four of the industries diversified telecom, integrated telecom services, telecom services, and wireless telecom services. These four industries turned out to be the best performing industries of this week. This following the fact that several telecom industries were top rank improver in the previous week. So using this weekly market Roundups data and QA, one could catch the very bottom of several telecom industry stocks. Renewable energy is another top performer. As renewable energy equipment and services went up, so did First Solar. We had actually identified a long trade opportunity in First Solar on 28th April. As of Friday's close, that long trade has given more than 65% profit. Let's look at the worst performing industries of this week. The worst performing industries are in very diverse industries. There is no clear pattern. Advertising is the worst performer you may use Q Global to look for short opportunities in this industry. Let's now look at the biggest rank improvers and decliners of the week. From industries with biggest rank improvements, we see that six of the 10 rank improving industries are related to consumer spending. So you may look for potential long trades in these industries. Use Q Global to look for the exact buy point and use Q Vital to find stocks that are fundamentally stronger relative to peers. These consumer spending related industries are motorcycle manufacturers, home improvement retail, specialized consumer services, diversified consumer services, specialty retail and specialty retailers. One thing to note is that from this week onward, we have vastly expanded on the number of industries that we analyze using QH. We used to study 160 industries and from this week we have started analyzing 280 industries. As we'll see later using QH, you can drill down from the industries to the stocks that belong to those industries. Let's look at the industries with biggest rank declines. 
For industries with biggest rank declines, we see four of the rank decliners are related to utilities. These are water and related utilities, independent power and renewable electricity, independent power producer and energy trader, and multi-line utilities. As multiple related industries are worsening in utilities, you may look for potential short opportunity in these industries. To identify the exact short entry date, you may use Q Global. And if you are not going to short any stock, you may at least protect your profit by using Q Global charts if you are already holding a long position in any of the stocks of these industries. That was our broad market sector and industry analysis using graphs. Let's have a look at the revamped QH where we are analyzing 280 industries and see where we can look for potential long and where we can look for potential short. This is the revamped QH. I have sorted the data based on last five days, that is this week's performance. And we can see several telecom related industries are among the top performers. If we filter the industries on telecom, then we see that all that four telecom related industries were among worst performers in earlier periods and now all of them are starting to turn from magenta to cyan that is from bearish to bullish and using that signal from q edge and using q global technical charts we could catch the very bottom of some of the stocks in these industries. These were shared in our traders community, as I have already mentioned. You may look up those posts at our traders community. Telecom continues to be strong this week. Diversified Telecom holding the rank one and Integrated Telecom holding the rank two. The other two telecom industries are also holding very high ranks. So using Q global charts, if you find a suitable low risk opportunity, you may look for long trades in these industries. Among the other industries where we may have potential long trade, we can have a look at oil and gas exploration and production. This industry was also bearish for a long time until about two months ago. And since then, it is rapidly improving rank and holding on to that improvement. In this week, that is over the last five days, it has a rank of 11. That is a big improvement from rank of 230 that the same industry had two months ago. So using Q Global, if you find a suitable low risk opportunity, you may look for that in the industry of oil and gas exploration and production. For potential long trades, we look for industries which were weak, bearish, that is magenta in earlier periods and turning cyan in recent periods. Using that visual analysis, we can immediately see that there may be potential long trades in oil and gas exploration and production. This industry has a rank of 11 over this week, whereas earlier, just two months ago, it had a very poor rank of 230. So you may look for potential long trade in this industry using Q Global. Renewable energy continues to be strong. You remember earlier it used to be full of magenta color ranking but now we see gradually it has moved up and almost all the periods are now cyan color 
in this week it ended with a strong performance again and using this qa analysis and q global you could catch the very bottom of some of the renewable energy stocks like first solar let's look for some industries where we can look for potential short trades to do that you can sort the QH data on the reverse order that is from largest to smallest and we see that this week advertising is the worst performer with the worst possible rank of 280 out of 280 industry groups that we are analyzing you can see that advertising had been weak for a while so the best time to short advertising stocks might have already passed for shorting the very top we may look for industries that were cyan in earlier periods and turning magenta now let's try to identify such an industry group semiconductor seems to be one such industry it was strong for many months however in recent periods it is turning magenta so you could look for potential short trades in the semiconductor and semiconductor equipment industry auto parts and equipment is another such industry which was strong for many months ranking showing up in cyan color and in the recent periods rank is declining so if q global gives us an optimal entry point you may look for short in auto parts and equipment industry or at the very minimum if you are holding long position you may protect profit using q edge and q global in this manner we are able to combine industry analysis and technical analysis together and if you use q vital then you can also align the fundamental strength or weakness of the stock in favor of your trade that is all that i plan to cover in today's session thank you for attending and i look forward to seeing you in our next session have a great weekend and trade profitable.